Good evening. Welcome to Ripley Tabernacle Baptist Church. And once again, we're able to uh, preach the Word and have time of prayer and and sing uh, songs about our Lord and Savior. And I appreciate you uh, letting us come into your home in this way and and, and be a, able to, to share the love of God with you. And I, I do want to say this along with that thought is... Um, We need to get back in church. And I just want to encourage you. We're we're laying out a plan, and we'll have that available this Sunday morning for preaching on the porch one more time. Then, Lord willing, on the 24th, we'll be back in this building and in the other building. And we'll, we'll, we'll share that. But I want you to pray about something. I want you to, we need to be cautious concerning our comfort zone. And, there are some that, you know, come the 24th probably shouldn't come, you know, if you, especially if you have any symptoms of a cold or those types of things. We, we definitely understand that. And then there may be some that will be a higher risk with their breathing or things. I understand that. But there will be many that um, if we're not careful, we're comfortable. I mean, I want you to think about this. I, I'm... I'm speaking to you, and then I at home sit and watch it as well. And if we're not com- if we're not careful, we will get really comfortable. And um, during the message, go get a snack, or during the preaching of God's word, begin a conversation. And you know, God wants us to come here in this place and have church together, fellowshipping together. And I want you to pray with me about that that we'll be in tune with Him and be obedient to Him as we go forward in these days that we're in. And I, I, I say that with caution and with love, um, but I don't want us to get comfortable having church when we want to have church. I don't want us to get comfortable allowing our flesh to dictate our worship. And I hope that'll be your prayer as we go forward. They'll be ready to rejoice and, and worship our Lord and Savior the way, the way He intended it to be done. And uh, I thank you for your consideration along that line. I do want to say also, Bibles for grads. I'm thrilled we're going to be able to provide every Ripley High School graduate with a copy of God's Word. If you've given towards that, thank you. I really appreciate that. If you haven't yet, you can still do that. Uh, the same way as far as any other offerings, uh, mail it to the church, drop it by, or go online to the uh, website and go to Tithely, and there's a way to do that there. But if you want your specific name in a particular Bible, if that one's still available, you can do that up till this Friday. After Friday, we won't be able to, you know, maybe give you a specific graduate's name. But um, just want to encourage you, if you haven't done that, uh, we, we'd love to have you do that. Well, listen, on Wednesday evenings, we typically have a prayer time. I appreciate what Pastor Mike does following the service. We have that time of prayer. Uh, but I've asked Brother Clarence, he's faithful to um, have our prayer time in our services, and I look forward to doing that again as well. But I've asked him if he could come this evening and just lead us in prayer for our service and uh, ask the Lord to meet with us. So, Brother Clarence, won't you come at this time and lead us in word of prayer? God bless you. Good day, church family. Well, we sure do miss the contact with with all of our our church family and our friends, but uh, prayerfully looking forward to to getting back together in our in our in our church services. Um, the preaching on the porch, wow, hasn't that been a blessing? Uh, I know there's been a lot of work involved with, with getting that put together, and I sure hope you haven't missed that. But the preaching on the porch, we're going to have it one more time this Sunday. One more time this Sunday. Just be prayerfully, keep that in your mind, in your prayers, and, uh, and we'll pray for an- another good turnout. Wow, the parking lot has been full. Thanks for all that's been involved. I know this takes a lot of work to get that set up, but thank you very much. Uh, even Jonathan Smith is getting all the parking set up and all the guys working for him with him. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Wednesday night, wow, Wednesday night's been very beautiful. It's been great. A pastor or, or one of the other preachers has been given a, a good message on Wednesday night. And Pastor Mike has been given... He's doing a live prayer request after that service. So be with the, be with the church on, on Facebook or, 
the social media of your choice and, and uh, just be with uh, those involved. And Pastor Mike will take your request. And, and he has a big prayer request after that. And uh, a lot of prayers going out. <clears throat> I want to thank you guys for that. My goodness, you know, Pastor Mike, Pastor Josh again for, for setting up the porches. What a blessing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we, we love you today. You know, God, we love you every day. And we want to thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed to us. Thank you for keeping us safe, especially during this time. Thank you for the group of folks that's been helping to work on the porch and keeping us in touch with our church family. God, we pray now for those that have lost a loved one during this, this terrible time of, the, of illness. Be close to the families now as possible, God, be with, that's still battling with this terrible illness. Please, God, be with our country. Be with our state leaders, local leaders, as we slowly open up our state and our community. Keep our folks safe. Our small shop owners, Lord, Lord safe as, as they're, they're planning their reopening. Lord, just be with our senior citizens. Keep them safe. Keep them well, Lord. God, we want to thank you for our country. We want to thank you for the right to, to come to our church and, and listen to our pastors. Be with, the, be with everything that's said and done, Lord. And we want to thank you, Lord, for continuing to do what you do. Thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us, Lord. And God, we love you. Be with everything that's said and done here tonight, Lord. Be with the, with the preaching. Be with the prayer request in, in coming up soon, Lord, after that. And we'll never fail, Lord, to give you the praise. Glory and honor for it all in Jesus' holy name. And amen. <laughs> are crashing round when my heart is heavy and I'm swiftly going down help me to remember however rough the sea that underneath the current your arms are Lifting me 
above the troubled sea. I'll be safe because I know your arms are holding me. Above the troubled sea I'll be safe because I know Your arms are holding me I'll be safe because I know Your arms are holding me Amen. Get your Bibles out, if you would. Psalms chapter 18. Psalms chapter 18. And in my uh, silliness, you might say, I want to say, hey, are you eating a snack again? Come on. <laughs> Let's uh, let's have church, amen? Now, some probably won't like that I even said that. I'm just being a little silly. But let's do get our Bibles out and, uh, and, and have uh, a time of worship in God's Word uh, concerning our Lord and Savior who's done everything for us, and He's worthy of our praise, and He's worthy of our attention here for just the next few moments, if you will. Psalms 18, and I want to look at uh, the first three verses and also want to read the inscription that, that begins before these verses, okay? Psalms 18, the Bible says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said... Verse number one, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies." You know, uh, as the inscription states in this passage, um, this psalm was originally uh, a song that was written to the glory of the Lord and to honor Him for delivering David from King Saul. You know, David was running from Saul at this time, and uh, he was in constant danger of death and, you know, very troubling time, you might say. Now he's been delivered from his enemies, and he lifts his voice up in praise. And boy, I, I think we can relate to that. God's, we've had struggles, and God's been good and helped us along the way, and we should lift him up. In praise, not because it feels good to us and not because we enjoy the entertaining aspect of, of lifting up our voices in praise, but because He's worthy. Because He's worthy. Let me tell you something. I want to look at this passage and think a little bit about our song of victory. Hey, listen, I'm saved on my way to heaven and I've got a song of victory to sing about. And boy, in God's Word, in the pages of God's Word, there's uh, great truths that'll help us. You know, I've been saved from the wrath of the enemy. I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and one day I'll be with Him forever. I look forward to that. But you know, also in this life, uh, daily He helps me and gives me victory in struggles that I face. I'm glad for that. Now before we look into this passage, I'd like for you to turn over one more chapter. We're in Psalms uh, 18, but uh, we'll, we'll look in Psalms 19 at a few verses that I help. I think helps explain um, what we're looking into in God's Word. But let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll look at these few verses in Psalms 19, and then look at the three there in Psalms 18. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you that we can, Lord, in our homes, places... Uh, uh, 
wherever you've situated us this evening, we can just take a few moments, uh, undivided attention, and, and look into your word. Lord, I'm nothing, but you're everything. I'm just a mouthpiece sharing what's in these pages. But God, may you get all the glory. May we um, set aside this time undisturbed, undistracted to worship you. Lord, we need you. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, I remember uh, growing up, especially as a teenager, listening to Lester Roloff. And uh, he, he'd sing and preach, and uh, in no way would I compare myself to his abilities and wisdom and knowledge. I, I did get to meet him on several occasions and enjoyed that. But he'd sing Psalms 19, verses 7 through 10. Psalms 19, verses 7 through 10. And I want to look at those verses for just a moment. Sing that song. If you know it, sing along with me. You sing verse 7, then verse 10 as a chorus. Verse 8, verse 10, and then verse 9 and verse 10. So let's look at that here for just a minute. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Wow, I think about the Lord and His Word and uh, well, He's worthy of our praise. And we ought to have a song of victory. And I want to look at David's, th- these verses, these first three verses and think about that thought. As we spend our time in these verses, let the, 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 the Word remind us of who He is and what He's done for us. The first thing I notice in verse 1 is the plan, the plan of the psalmist. In the very beginning, there's two profound things that are mentioned. First, he declares his love for the Lord. You know, and I, I'll stop right there just a moment and say, it's good every once in a while to say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. We all like to hear someone tell us they love us, um, but there's that love. And then what he does secondly is he declares his absolute dependence upon the Lord. So look at those two thoughts for just a minute. In verse 1, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. There's a lot in the verse. Think about love. The word translated love here carries on the idea of a, um, a touching, a, a hugging, you might say. And it's almost like David just wants to come and, and, and hug and be close to the Lord. Who doesn't like a good hug? And we, we desire that. We've all felt this way about someone we love. And boy, I tell you, just something about a little child coming up and wrapping their arms around you or your spouse. I mean, just someone that means a lot to you just gives you a hug. We enjoy that. And uh, I think about that emotion, that, that, that expression of love. I believe we can go to the Bible in John 20 in verse 17, and we see um, Mary Magdalene as she touched, as well when she encountered Christ. And Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. I see this, I just picture she sees Christ and, and she loves Him and she wants to express that. But He's at the time, of course, could not be touched. Also in Matthew 28 
in verse 9, the, the disciples, when they saw him also, it says, and, and, and they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, all hell. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. That desire, I mean, boy, you just, you, you love the Lord and you're so passionate about that, that you just want to embrace him. They felt that way. When I think about all the Lord's done for me and all He's done for you, should we not feel that way? It should be all about Him. I mean, we're just so in love with Christ. 1 John 4, 19, we love Him because He first loved us. When I was out in sin and lost, He loved me. So I see this expression in verse 1 of David and, and love. And then also I noticed the strength. Nine times in the first couple of verses, David uses the personal pronoun, um, my, my. You know, I remember my children were little, and, and most children this way, we learn that early on. They say, mine, mine. This is my this, or this is my that, whatever it could be we're speaking of. It's just a childish way of expressing, that's what belongs to me. Well, it seems like David's doing that. In, in a childlike faith, in a childlike way, he's expressing what the Savior means to him. And that's why he says, my strength, my strength. David's plan is to live for the Lord, to love the Lord, and depend upon the Lord for everything that he needs and everything that he does in his life. I think each one of us should have and would have that same desire. So I notice the plan of the psalmist here and what, what he's thinking. But I notice something else. Verse 2 begins, it changes, and it begins to express the praise there's a praise here for a personal God. The usage of my again, as I think about that, the most important thing in life is knowing that you're right with God. I'm glad that I can say tonight, He's my God. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. It's a personal relationship. It's not about what my grandma did. It's not about what somebody else did. It's the fact that Jesus came, died on an old rugged cross, and was buried and rose again the third day, and I believe that, and I trusted Him. So I can say, my God, and I can say, my, my Savior. A lot of times people in, tr in trouble, they want to cry out to God that they don't have a relationship with. There's praise here, I notice, for a personal God. And um, there's also what well, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then Acts 16, 31 says it like this, And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Wow. To be saved, there's a moment when you've turned to Jesus Christ. And once you've done that, tonight sitting there in your living room or wherever you are, you can realize and, and be assured that He's my Savior. Then there's praise not just for a personal God, but for a powerful God. A powerful God. In God and in His relationship, David finds all the strength that he needs to make it through. There's uh, nine different situations, eight, eight metaphors and one in between there that we'll look at real quick, okay? Um, David describes, first of all, that God is his stability. And what I mean by that is David describes God as a rock. He says, the Lord is my rock. Speaks of a, a cliff, you might say, that he can find comfort and, 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 and security and he can hide under. And aren't you glad you have a rock? I think about our day and age when we want to build something that has any kind of stability. If we want to build even a road, you might say, what is it that we do? We put down a base of rock. We want to have that foundation. And David's talking about that rock is what makes things stable. 
When everything in the world is being tossed and twisted around, I'm glad that God remains the same. He's always stable. The Bible says in Malachi 3, 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. He's the Lord, He changes not. Well, we change, we change minds all the time. But God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Also, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Hey, I'm glad that He's that rock. I'm glad that He's our stability, you might say. We're going to face hardships, times when we really under, can't understand what's going on, but I'm glad my foundation is sure and it's a rock. And David was thankful for that. The Lord is my rock. He goes on to say, secondly, God is our safety. He mentions God is like a fortress. He says, and my fortress. I have to think that has to refer to when he was in the mountains and I mentioned before about the rock and he could get in the cleft as a place that he could hide and, and get comfort from. I'd have to think he's doing that. He reminds us, David reminds us that it's a place of safety. Aren't you glad that you're safe and secure in the rock of Jesus Christ? I sure glad I am. I'm glad I am. Psalms 57 and 1 says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Let me tell you something. There's no place like this shelter of God. No place like the fortress of God as David describes it. We find a safe refuge there when we're under attack. Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Paul said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. Then Psalms 27, 1. Again, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be afraid? Hey, I'm glad He's a fortress. Aren't you glad you're safe and secure and you don't have to worry about it? Something else, thirdly, I noticed that he mentions here in verse 2. And he says and my deliverer. My deliverer. It's a word that refers to one who saves, who, who rescues, you might say. Um, gets us from the danger that we're in. How many times have you been rescued? Now, I can think of a time as a young person uh, swimming in the pool, and I tell you what, I thought I was going to drown. I mean, I, I did. It was uh, not a good situation. And, and I know someone growing up that, that, did, that did drown, and that's a, that's a terrible thing. But somebody lifted me up that was bigger than I was, and it wasn't over their head, and in my mind, rescued me. That's exactly what David is saying about the Lord. He's his deliverer. The Lord saved us when we received him by faith. But in 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as He is in light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. You know, one day we're going to be ultimately delivered when we spend all eternity with Him. I'm glad He's our Savior. I'm glad He's our Deliverer. All right, number four, I noticed something else in this passage. It goes on one more. It mentions... My God. My God. This is the word um, that, that, that pictures Almighty God. Now, we live in a day and age where there's a lot of little gods. A lot of things that want to take precedent in our life. A lot of things that we give into and, and yield to, you might say. But 
What he's talking about here is, is one who is over all things and who's contr- in control of all things. That's the God he's speaking about. We ought to rejoice in the knowledge that the God we love and the God we serve is in charge of everything that happens. Nothing catches him by surprise. Isaiah 45, 7, I mentioned this the other day. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. God, I'm glad He's our sovereign. I'm glad I can say He's my God. Something else I notice here, God is our strength. David tells us that God is all we need. He is our strength. When I'm weak, He's strong. Isn't that wonderful? The fact that we know we can get our strength from there. We do a lot of things in our day and age to give strength to this fleshly body we have. Let me tell you something. Spiritually, if if I don't eat physically, I'm going to get weak. If I don't exercise and move around and use what God's given me fleshly, it's going to get weak and it won't be able to accomplish what it needs to and what God's intended for us to do. The same thing is true spiritually. The same thing's true. Hey, God is our strength. He knows what we need. He knows we need to be in this place, worshiping Him and under the preaching of God's Word, having the fellowship of other believers. He understands that. He knows we need to be in this old book reading God's Word. He knows that. And when we don't get that, we'll get weak. I mean, right now, right now, sitting there in the comforts of your home, if we're not careful, we'll begin to get a little weak in our faithfulness to worshiping God. We'll get a little weak if we're not careful in our faithfulness to go to church when it's church time. Not when our flesh wants to have it. Not when we feel good about having it. Or not when it's more convenient or comfortable for us to have it. Let me tell you, spiritually, I'm glad that He is our strength. And He'll help us. Now, in between all these, I notice another thing. He's our satisfaction. It says, in whom I will trust David had learned that God would never leave him nor forsake him. He'd never fail him. He never found the Lord lacking in power, not able to accomplish something that needed accomplished. He didn't find that. Folks had turned their back on David, but God never did. Hey, folks may turn their back on you in this day, but God never will. I mentioned that word trust, a troubling word. I say this all the time. I'm not saying it because I'm perfect, Uh, but it's better to tell the truth that hurts and then heals than to tell a lie that soothes and then kills. There's something about being able to absolutely trust somebody whether it hurts or not. There's something about knowing that in a particular uh, relationship, in a particular acquaintance, in a particular um, whatever the case may be, that there is trust. And I'm glad that David has realized that he's found somebody who he's able to trust. And he says, in whom I will trust. Hey, listen, we're going to face some things in this life. You may be facing some things right now, and we may not be able to trust the economy. We may not be able to trust particular things that are happening in our day and age. Let me tell you something. You can trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You can trust God with all you have. You can trust Him. He'll never fail you. He'll never let you down. The Bible says that he can't lie. Isn't that something? Well, let's move on. I notice another thing here as we go into our our, our passage. He says, uh, in whom I will trust my buckler. He's also our shield. It simply means, uh, the buckler simply means a shield, you might say. When David calls on um, on the Lord, um, he's his like protector and shield 
from things that are going on. I'm glad, you know, I've, I've watched uh, illustrations. I know the Bible talks about a shield. And can you imagine uh, arrows being flung towards you? And it's good to have a shield that will protect you. And David's recognizing that he's his buckler, that he, he's his shield. You know, I don't think we fully realize how often God is protecting us, how often He watches over us. We typically dwell on the accidents, the bad things that happen, the times we struggle, but I believe we fail to realize how many times every moment of every day that God's watching over us and He's protecting us from what could have happened. How many times have you got held up in traffic? And then the traffic is going again and you get a ways down the road and you'll either see an accident or be right behind an accident. There's been times I've seen that happen and I wonder, wow, when I was aggravated back there because there was a traffic jam or when I was aggravated because I got behind a little bit or I got behind a big truck or something slowed me down. When you get to that place where that accident is, you think, praise God, he was watching over me. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He goes on here after that and mentions, and the horn of my salvation. You know, the horn is a symbol of strength and conquest. When David calls God the horn of salvation, he's saying the Lord is the, the strength of his salvation and that uh, in, in salvation he can have absolute security. Totally secure in Him. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 1 and verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Hey, He's never lost one yet. He's not going to start with you. That horn of salvation. Um, he saved us to take us to heaven one day. John chapter 6 and verse 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. When I read about the horn of salvation, in my mind, I think a little bit about Thanksgiving, and we'll see the little horn-shaped basket that's full of an abundance of, of fruit and ears of grain, you might say, and corn. I believe what it is, it's a symbol of the abundance of what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Horn of salvation, strength, conquest. It goes on to say, uh, beyond that security, that God is our supply. He says in the last part of verse 2, and my high tower. High tower. It kind of refers to the, the great towers that were built around these walls and s certain points along the wall, especially on the corners, there would be a high and lifted up tower. And what would happen in that tower is they would have supplies there, food and probably whatever they need to drink, and, but they would have ammunition. And the beauty of the high tower is I think about, you know, even going hunting, there's times you want to get a little higher above the game that you're trying to uh, go after. You want to get up on a ridge top in glass and see if you can't find the game you're looking for. Or you want to get up in a tree stand to, to get an advantage, to get up above what you're after. And I think about going to these um, this high tower and it'd be full of... Um, ammunition, which in that day would have been arrows. And can you imagine looking down on the enemy as they begin to approach and they're, they're going to attack and you've got this vantage point, you've got this high tower and you can fling those arrows, arrows down with the possibility of arrows coming back being less because they have to shoot up at you. You have an advantage. Let me tell you, with the high tower in Jesus Christ, we have an advantage. We have an advantage. When the battle rages around us, we can run to Him, be lifted up above our battle so that we have that advantage. We can get refreshment in that high tower. We get all we need in the high tower. God is our supply. 
You know, I think uh, we think of battle so often. We do think about the military might. We do think about the weaponry. We do think about the strength we might have in those things. And let me tell you what it says in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 47. Now, don't forget the battle is the Lord's. It says, And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, For the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. No wonder that David praised the Lord. However, we can praise Him for the very same reason. Let's praise Him and give Him honor and resolve in our hearts as we worship and serve Him in a spirit and truth. Well, we saw the plan of the psalmist in the first verse. We see the praise of In the second verse, as we listed each of those things that David points out, then notice in verse 3, you would call this the pledge. He makes a pledge to call on God and to trust Him alone for all the victories in life. It says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Wow. David's recognized where his strength comes from. David's recognized what will give him victory in his life. So he declares that I will call upon the Lord. And he, boy, he, he, he throws that in there, who's worthy, who's worthy to be praised. You know, um, what a lesson for us as children of God We must learn that God is all these things that David said he was. He'll protect you. He'll provide for you. He'll help you. He'll refresh you. He will be there for you when you need him. All these things mentioned are ours. We can claim those. Hebrews 2, 4 says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live By faith, let us live like we believe in the God of this universe. Let us pledge to walk by faith, just as David did. You know, there's there's a statement that I've heard from time to time, uh, typically by young folks, but it's, um, it's an expression is all that. And I've heard people say, you just think you're all that, don't you? I mean, you just think, you know, and it's sometimes used in a disrespectful tone. But I want to think about that for just a minute. Those verses I just read, and I'm not being disrespectful. Hey, he's all that. He's all that. God is all that. All those things that were shared, he is all that. He's all that the Bible says he is. And much, much more. There's a passage that talks about, I mean, we think this is a lot, but we couldn't contain all that could be written about him. And he's all that. He's all that. You know, um, my question to you this evening would be, are you loving him like you should? Are you? Or do others compete for the Lord's attention? I don't want to beat this to death, but I mentioned about worshiping in this place versus worshiping at home. I know there's some that are providentially hindered, and they can't be in this assembly. I understand that, and God does too. But I understand there'll come a point where if we're not careful, something else is going to compete for the Lord's attention when it comes time to go to church. Let me ask you, are you living... For him like you should? Or do other things cut into his time? Are you learning from him like you should? Or do you live right now in doubt and in fear? Maybe you're lost. Maybe you need to trust Christ as your Savior. Come and bow before him. I don't know what your need is this evening, but I know for sure that he's all that. Everything I just mentioned. It ought to be our song of victory. I'll tell you what, the next time we sing a song, we ought to sing like we believe what it says. Victory in Jesus, my Savior. Isn't that wonderful? You can be victorious. Hey, Christian, claim these things that are in God's Word. Lost person, 
Trust Him before it's too late. I've shared it often. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, that's including you sitting right there. For all have sinned. But I'm glad that's not the end of the story. I'm glad it's not the end of the story. The Bible tells us that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Call on Him this evening, whatever your need may be. If you're lost, trust Him as your Savior. Let Him be all these. He's all these things regardless, but He can be all these things to you. Why don't you call on Him tonight? Let's pray. Lord, we love You. Thank You so much for Your Word, for these three short verses and, and, and the, the four verses in Psalms 19 that we looked at and, and sung. Lord, I pray You're lifted up and glorified. Lord, You're so many things, we couldn't name them all. We'll, in our flesh, we can't even worship You like we should without Your help. But Lord, someone could be listening right now and viewing this broadcast and they're lost. May they call on you. May these things be theirs. They can claim those and this can be their song of victory as well. We love you, Lord. We thank you so much. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you so much this evening. I, I, I really appreciate you being a part of this service and I want to encourage you to pray about the, the coming steps that we take as a church and be faithful. Uh, God's people here at Ripley Tabernacle have been so good and so faithful to give and to pray and to be involved where they can. Let's continue on. Let's, let's, let's make this something that, that God gets all the glory from. Covet your prayers. If you made a decision for Christ, let somebody know. Let us know if you would. We'd love to help you in any way we can. Thank you for the encouraging emails and texts and calls we've received and cards. I really appreciate that. And God bless you till the next time we meet. We're going to have Sunday morning preaching from the porch one more time. And I'd encourage you to come. Rain or shine, we'll have it so you can listen to it in your cars. And um, it's a, just an opportunity to come and assemble at the time we usually have church. Won't you come and join us? God bless you.